I play red. Today we're going to be looking at one of the biggest games we've dealt with on the channel. When I say biggest, I mean biggest. Not only in terms of box size, which is why I'm not messing around trying to do this with the back, but in terms of complexity and in terms of general table space. So it's going to be a bit of a squeeze on our little video table. So today we are looking at Barrage from Cranio Creations. Uh, it's a game about producing energy from water, so hydroelectricity, set in the French Alps in the 1920s. So let's have a look at the game. I wasn't joking when I said this was a big game. Uh, we have a smaller table up here for filming and it is jam-packed. So, let's have a look. The bulk of points you're going to get in Barrage will come from producing energy. So let's have a look at how you do that on the main board. Initially, there are some neutral colour dams set up. These are done randomly, one in the mountain area, one in the hills area and one in the plains area. So we have those set up. During the game, water will start up the top in the head streams and flow down the board and it will get blocked by dams. So water here will be blocked by this dam. Because it's only one high though, it will only block one water. So any other water coming down here will flow through. However, here there's a dam that's too high. So water flowing through will get blocked two drops. And the bottom one three will block three bits of water. So to generate energy, you need a dam. You need a conduit and you need a powerhouse. So, in this case, these two water would go through my conduit to my powerhouse. Now, the amount of energy they produce is dependent not only on the number of drops, but on the value of the conduit. Here, I have two water droplets and the conduit is a four. So, I'd get two times four. So, my base production of energy would be Eight. So here the water comes through the conduit to my powerhouse but then it's actually going to travel down and sit behind this dam. So that is everything you need to produce energy. Let's have a look how the game actually plays. On your player board you have your various buildings. You have your bases and your elevations that make up your dams, your conduits and your powerhouses. These all have different costs, which are shown here. Also, as you build more stuff and pop it on the board, you'll reveal bonuses. You'll get this as a one-time bonus when it's revealed, but also during the income phase of the game. So, this one here, there's one here and here. But we'll come on to those and what they mean in a little bit. At the start of the game, you'll be given your player board that matches your colour and a random assistant. This will determine the number of credits, excavators and cement mixers that you'll start the game with. This also has a special ability as shown here. In this case, it means that my level three dams can hold four drops of water rather than three. You're also gonna get a lot of workers. Now, this for a worker placement game seems like a huge number of workers, but believe me, they go pretty quickly. So let's have a look at what you're gonna do with your workers. Starting with the worker placement spots on your player board. This is where you'll build. So let's pop a worker there and 
let's look at building something. Now, as I said, we start with those neutral dams and I think they're quite a nice place to begin. So I'm gonna build a conduit. So to build a conduit, I need to take the technology tile that applies to the building. So I pop that there. Then the cost is gonna be two excavators multiplied by the strength of the conduit that I want to build. So let's go take this conduit and choose where on the board. Obviously, the ones with the huge numbers are gonna produce huge amounts of energy, but are gonna cost you huge to build. So I'm starting with six. So the highest I can go is three. So let's pop that there for two, which is gonna cost me four machines. Now, Barrage is slightly different in the way it utilizes your resources. This is gonna cost me four excavators. These don't go away, but they're currently busy building that conduit. So I move the wheel around once and I won't get these machines back until I've done a full circle. So essentially they're tied up for now. On your player board, you can build one, two, three, four different buildings. However, each one will cost you progressively more workers. And you'll also notice this red border at the end here. If I place here, I also have to pay free credits. There are various spots on the boards that have this red border, and it's always an indicator that you need to pay the extra credits. So now let's look at the main worker placement board. So starting up at the top here, we have the turbine station. This is where you'll produce energy. Anything marked with the three plus or the four indicates the number of players. So if you're playing a two player game, this row and this row won't be available to you. If you're playing a three player game, this row won't be available. So, if I want to produce energy, I can pop two workers here and I'll get my base value plus an extra two. So, earlier when I would have produced eight energy, this will give me ten. Again, notice the spots with the red borders and the credits. So, if I go here, if anyone else wants that plus two, they have to go here and pay the credits. When you generate energy, you need to ensure you go up on the energy track. So again, using my previous example, A plus the extra two means I put my marker on the 10. And we'll come back to why that's important later on. So all of these squares here are for producing energy. We then have the bank spot. The bank spot is different to every other placement available. You can place as many workers as you want there and other players can also place there. So if I wanted to put two workers there, I'd get two coins. Uh, if I wanted to put four, I'd get four coins and so on. Water management here. Water will be placed on the head streams at the start of each turn and flow at, towards the end of each turn. However, if you want extra water or movement, this is where you go. So I can place one worker here to get two water drops and place them in my choice of head stream. Now, bearing in mind I've got my conduit here and setting things up nicely, I might choose to pop two there. Or I might choose to put one there and one there for later on in the game. Let's see. Let's pop. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to pop one there and one there for now. The second spot available here allows you to put one water drop, but to move it. So in this case, I could put one water in the headstream here, but I also get to flow it. So, 
it would go down here and sit in front of that dam. These symbols are repeated at various points in the game. So once you've played it a couple of times and you've got used to it, it's all good. So moving down, we have the workshop. Do you remember my little wheel with my machinery in? This can help me get my machines back. This little spanner symbol indicates one rotation of my technology wheel. So if I popped a worker there, I'd get one rotation. So I'd get to move this on one space. So in the same vein, this spot lets you pay two credits and move two or five credits to move three rotations. Next, we have the machinery shop. This is where you'll get your extra machines that you're gonna need through the game. So I can pop a worker there, pay two credits and get an excavator. Or in a four player game, four credits to get one of my choice or two workers and five credits to get one of each. Next, we have the contract office, which makes up quite a big chunk of this board. At the start of the game, one of these purple contracts was chosen at random. The number of these varies depending on the player count. I had things set up for a two player, so there's only one available. So at any point, if a player manages to produce 13 energy, in one action, they can claim this contract, which will give them seven points and four spins of their wheel. Once they've completed it, it's flipped over and no one else can claim it. However, other players can take these smaller contracts. They come in, if you like, three sizes, small, medium, and large. So I can place a worker here, to take one of these of my choice for a later point. So these need four energy each, five and six and 10 and eight. Alternatively, I can go here and pay one credit to take two contracts. So this to me always seems like better value. So let's go here. It's early game, so the amount of energy I'm gonna be producing is fairly low. So if I pay one credit to the bank, I can then take this one and I think that one. These contracts I just place on my player board and once per turn, when I produce energy, I can complete one of these. They have a range of bonuses. So this one, for example, will give you three points and two water flowing down the board. This one here will let me build a conduit of up to three for three of charge. And this one will give me some credits and boost my energy rating. Obviously, the higher number ones are harder to achieve, but get you better rewards. So that's always something to bear in mind when taking the contracts. Last but not least, right at the bottom, we have the patent office. This allows you to buy new technologies. So you place two workers on one of these spots, pay five credits and take the technology tiles. These allow you to build the same buildings as usual, but will come with a benefit. Let's reset stuff and have a look at how a turn works. Back to zero energy, that's quite important. So, the game actually has these really handy cheaty, cheaty player aids that tell you the turn order. So, the first thing that happens is income. Do you remember those spots on the board I spoke about? This is where you'll get those bonuses. So, obviously, at the start of the game, you get nothing. Then, headstreams. 
This is where you place water in the top that will start to flow. So we're in turn one of the game. So nothing in there, nothing in there, nothing in there and one in there. Then we go to the action phase. So this is where you'll take turns placing your workers. Obviously some people will run out before others. Um, just keep placing until everyone has run out of workers before going to the next phase. So let's have a look at what I might want to do this turn. Now the only water coming in is this side which isn't great. So I'm actually I am actually going to start going back to my original plan I think by building something something that's good isn't it I'm going to build a powerhouse so my first powerhouse costs me two concrete mixers each player starts with a set of technology tiles one for each type of building and one that's kind of a random wild card if you like at the moment I don't need to use that so I'm going to use this to build my powerhouse and rotate my wheel once so take my powerhouse off the board and I'm going to place it believe it or not I'm going to place it here there's method in my madness I promise you so for my second action I need some more excavators in an ideal world uh, maybe I don't maybe I don't that's what I'm going to do I am going to build a conduit I'm going to pop that in there and use all six of my excavators and rotate which you can see the concrete mixers start getting closer to me so I'm paying six which means I can place on a three so what I need to do now is get some water down here so that water comes from this head stream so I'm going to go here to put a water in the top and let it flow which means it flows down and it stops there so my next action is going to be to produce some energy whoop, whoop. so no one else has gone here I can go here I have one water droplet times three plus the two so I'm going to produce a total of five energy with this droplet which will go through I'll go through that way and go off the end of the board so I'm going to get five energy so move my marker up on the energy track to five and also it gives me enough to complete this starter contract so I'm going to get two credits put them on my board and go up by two energy so move that up flip that over so I know I've completed it now that puts me in a nice position for the end of the round I'll explain the energy track when we get to the end of the round so I've got no contracts I've got no machinery it's this game is a constant battle between what you want and what you can have so I'm going to go here on the workshop to rotate for one to start getting my machines closer to me but I still need more machines so I'm going to go here and pay five credits to take one of each now if you notice there's a few ooh, different types of machinery um, the concrete mixers and the excavators come in three different sizes so we have basically ones threes and fives of both types which can be handy when you're trying to fit them into 
your little technology dial um, when you're trying to build. So I'm going to take one of them and one of them. Now, remember what I said about running out of workers? I'm down to three workers, which means I could do a build, but I also want some more contracts. Oh, um, what's my bonus there? I'm actually, just for your benefit and to show you guys income, obviously I'm sacrificing it all. I'm gonna place three workers and I'm gonna build a powerhouse. So my first one cost me two concrete mixers and the third one's gonna cost me three. I've used the technology tile for powerhouses, so I'm gonna use my wild one and pay three in there and turn the dial and place my second powerhouse. I don't really know where I want it to go yet because there's not a lot on the board. So, let's go there. However, I've now uncovered a bonus on my board. So, any numbers you see in the purple refer to energy so in this case i'm going to get another one energy so i move up one on the energy track i'm now out of workers my turn's ended once all the other players have finished placing we then move on to the water flow phase all water drops in the head streams here will start to flow down the board so in this case we've only got the one and this is going to be a bit rubbish because this one will flow down <laughs> and there's no damp stopping it so it's actually going to flow right off the end of the board it is what it is <laughs> then we move on to the scoring phase and this is where the energy track is all important. So let's have a look at that. So I have eight energy generated in the round. That means I'm gonna get an income of four credits. As you can see, this goes up as you go up the energy track. So four credits. Then I'm gonna score the bonus tiles. These are something else that was set up randomly at the start of the game. So I'm actually gonna get four points for every conduit I have on the board. Now, luckily I got one on the board, so that will give me four points. So I move four up the score track. Once these have been scored, they'll be removed. And this is partly how you measure the round. Your position on the energy track will also give you points and also determine turn order. So in this case I'm up at the start so I'm gonna get six points for my position on the track. So move my score marker up and white will come in second and score two points. However if they hadn't produced any energy, although they'd have got three credits, they would have got minus three points. Then, because white produced the least energy, they get to go first for the next round. So we swap turn order here, we scored these points, and we move these back to zero. Now we've taken this off, you'll see this minus four. In progressive rounds, the amount you potentially score for these tiles is also influenced by where you are on the energy track. So, if I was here at the end of round two, I'd score two points for every completed contract, but because I'm not in this area, I'd get minus four of my total. These can never be negative so don't worry too much about that. Again, if we've done the second round and we're scoring bases, 
we'd get four point for each base I have on the board. If I was here, it would be minus four. However, if I was right the way back here, it would be minus eight. So these points for scoring the highest energy, along with these points for each round, is where the bulk of your points will come through this game. So don't forget to have a look and see what's coming up from round to round so that you can prepare for it. Play continues for four rounds like I've just shown you. At the start of round five, you'll notice no water is put into the head streams. So you'll be busy dealing with this water that will have flowed at the end of round four. Or alternatively, water that you've put on the board through the water management action. So there's no water coming in on round five. Also, you'll notice there's not one of these tiles for round five. Instead, you're going to fast forward to the end game scoring tile. There are a variety of these that all have different abilities, so you need to look them up. All of these tiles will score 15 points for first place, 10 for second and 5 for third. So again, while you're playing, something else to look out for is if you're going to get these points and if not, if you can rectify it. So along with the end game tile, you will also score points for, if you like, stuff you have. So any and all of your machinery, including what's in your wheel at the time and your credits. So you're going to add that up. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19. So I'm going to get one point for every five stuff I have. So in this case, I'd get three points. I'm also going to get points at the end of the game for any water that sat behind my dams. So here I'd get one point for that. Um, if I had a bigger dam, say here, I'd get two points for that. So in terms of end game scoring, other than this tile, there's not a lot of big point scoring. So you really need to keep track of these and the points here over the course of the game. We've been playing this a lot at two player during lockdown. Um, and you can't get in each other's way too much, but there's still an awful lot to think about. In the three or four player version of the game, obviously you're battling for space. So let's have a look at my little dam here. I'm attached to the powerhouse. I want to put a conduit in here so I can process it. But White, who's a very bad person indeed, decides to put a conduit there. Well, it's not the end of the world for me. I can still use their conduit to process this water in my powerhouse. So I have two, the conduit's free. I'm gonna get six energy. However, I have to pay white one credit for the privilege of using their conduit that they put in my way. And they're gonna get one point for each water processed. So in this case, they'd get the one coin from me and two points. I'd process as normal, the water would go off the bottom and back into the supply. There is a lot going on in this game. And I know when we first opened it, we were like, oh, you've got so many workers. What are you gonna do with all those workers? My word, they, you run out of these really quickly. Um, they just vanish using twos and threes, they're gone. Um, same with the buildings to some degree because there is a limited number of powerhouses and conduits um, and you really have to think about the placement because not everything is as obvious as you think. So um, for example, this powerhouse here, I can use to process from this water bowl 
or potentially this water bowl or this one or even all the way up here so placing those powerhouses where you can get the most out of them is really essential but in the case we showed earlier we have water just going straight down so you don't want them on that route oh so much to think about such a good game um we've also got the expansion <laughs> um if this isn't enough for you the expansion adds houses and tools and just gives you a load more to think about ah um we love barrage it's a great game it's available now and the expansion's available now check it out um it's what rob would call a brain melter hope you enjoyed this video hope it helps you with the massive beast that is barrage um if you liked it click like and subscribe and bells and all that stuff and come and say hello to me on social media on twitter on instagram on facebook at i play red thanks for watching see you later bye